What's up, you freaking geniuses? So, in this video, I'm going to teach you how to solve equations using the division property of equality. So, this property or rule is really helpful for when you're trying to undo multiplication. So, what do I mean by that? So, for example, if we had this problem right here, 2 times x is equal to 6. How would I solve for x right here? Well, I got to get rid of this 2 somehow, right? How would I do that? Well, in order to undo multiplication, all you're going to do is division, okay? But divide by what? Well, whatever you're trying to get rid of. So in this case, if we're trying to get rid of this 2 right here, well, then we're going to divide by 2. Okay, but why am I going to do that? Well, as you can see, we basically have a fraction here now. So let me rewrite this left side right here. So we're going to have 2 times x over 2, right? That's a fraction. On top we have 2 times x, on the bottom we have 2. But now, as you can see, we have the same number on top and on the bottom. So these reduce down to just 1. Okay, because for example, let's, let's say I got rid of the x real quick, and I just had 2 over 2. Well, 2 over 2, or 2 divided by 2, this would just equal 1. So that's why these reduce down to just 1. But in our problem, we're also multiplying by x, right? So we're multiplying by x. So that's why what we have right here, right? It's the same thing we have right here. Okay, so this would reduce down to, like we had over here, 1 times x. Okay, but there's still one really important thing that we have to do. And that's, you've probably heard it before. What you do to one side of an equation, you do to the other. So if we're dividing by 2 over here, we also have to divide by 2 over here. Okay, so let's bring down the rest of this problem now. So we simplified this left side down to 1 times x, and now that's equal to, that's equal to 6 over 2. 6 over 2. Okay, now we can simplify a few things. So 1 times x, what is that equal to? Well, that's just equal to x, right? And then we'll set that equal to 6 over 2. But 6 over 2 we can reduce, right? 6 over 2 is the same thing as saying 6 divided by 2, which is just 3, right? So 6 over 2 reduces down to just 3. All right, great. So as you can see, we came up with an answer for x. We got x is equal to 3. Now, the last part would just be checking our answer. And how would we do that? Well, that would just be plugging in our answer over here, plugging it into this original equation. And I'll write it down here just so it's a little easier to see. So the original equation was 2 times x is equal to 6. Okay, and for our answer, we got x is equal to 3. Okay, so that means I'm going to plug in a 3 into x right here, into our original equation. So I'm going to do 2 times 3 is equal to 6. So what is 2 times 3? Well, 2 times 3 is 6, right? And then we're saying that's equal to 6, right? Equal to 6. So is 6 equal to 6? Yes, right? It's the same number. So that means the answer we got right here was correct. Okay, let's try a couple more. Okay, now let's say we had negative 2 x is equal to 6. Now remember, whenever you have a number next to a variable like this, this always means multiply, okay? So here we have negative 2 times x is equal to 6. So since we're multiplying, how are we going to undo that? Well, we're going to divide, right? What are we going to divide by? Whatever we're trying to get rid of. So we want to get rid of this negative 2 right here, right? So that means we're going to divide by negative 2. Okay, but remember, whatever you do to one side, you have to do to the other, right? So if we're going to divide by negative 2 on this side, we also have to divide by negative 2 on this side. Okay, great. Now we can simplify a few things. So on this side, we have the same number on top, right, negative 2, and on the bottom, negative 2. So what does that mean? That means these simplify to simply 1, right? And don't forget, we still have this times x part right here. Okay, so times x. And now this is going to be equal to, equal to 
6 over negative 2. 6 over negative 2. Okay, now we can simplify a few things again. So 1 times x, that simplifies just to x. And then that's equal to... Okay, so now we have 6 over negative 2. That's the same thing as saying 6 divided by negative 2. What's that equal? Negative 3. Okay, because a positive number divided by a negative number is negative. And then we just have 6 divided by 2, right, which is just 3. All right, great. So we came up with an answer. We got x is equal to negative 3. Now, is this the correct answer? Well, there's only one way of checking that, and again, that's plugging in our answer into the original equation. So the original equation, again, I'll write it right here, was negative 2x is equal to 6. Okay, in our answer, we got x is equal to negative 3, so we're going to plug in a negative 3 right there for x. So this is going to be negative 2 times negative 3 is equal to 6. Okay, so what is negative 2 times negative 3? Well, a negative times a negative is a positive. And then 2 times 3 is just 6. So we have positive 6 is equal to positive 6. So this is obviously a true statement. So that means the answer we got down here is correct. Okay, let's try one more. So if we had negative 8a is equal to negative 32. How would we solve this? Well, again, the point is to isolate this variable by itself, right? So we have to get rid of this minus eight somehow. So since we're multiplying here, we're gonna divide by whatever we wanna get rid of, right? So we're gonna divide here by negative eight. And what you do to one side, you have to do to the other. So we're gonna divide by negative eight over here also. Okay, we have the same number on top and on the bottom, so this reduces down to just 1. And then we still have our a right here, right? So 1a. And then that's equal to negative 32 over negative 8. Okay, again, we can simplify a few things. So 1a, or 1 times a, that's the same thing as just a. And that's equal to negative 32 divided by negative 8. What is that? Well, a negative divided by a negative is a positive, okay? And then 32 divided by 8 is equal to 4. Okay, so we got an answer of A is equal to positive 4. And the last step is just going to be checking our answer to see if it actually works. So we'll plug it in right there to our original equation. So I'll rewrite it right here. So it's just negative 8A is equal to negative 32. So again, we got A is equal to positive 4. So we'll plug in a positive 4 right there for A. So we have negative 8 times positive 4. And this is supposed to equal negative 32. Okay, what is negative 8 times positive 4? Well, a negative times a positive number, that's a negative. And then we have 8 times 4, right, which is 32. Okay, and that's equal to negative 32. Okay, so here we have negative 32 is equal to negative 32. That's obviously a true statement. So our answer was also correct. All right, guys, so that is how you solve equations using the division property of equality. I hope the video and the examples were helpful. If they were, definitely leave a thumbs up down below. It's always appreciated. And if you still got questions, leave them in the comment section below, and I'll do my best to try and help you out. Also, there's a whole pre-algebra playlist attached at the end of the video. So if there's any other topics you need to check out, definitely check those out. And I'll see you there.